about this quite a lot and I'm a massive believer of it. Um, experiences that you've had in the past tend to sort of like mould or direct your Definitely. future. And we spoke about that just sort of like briefly. I know obviously you, you sort of talked about your, your sort of upbringing um, mm -hmm. and, and everything that happened with that. Were there any, anything else sort of that you sort of had um, sort of growing the, up? The or turning point for like, after we left school, me and him were sort of hanging with the hanging around with the wrong crowd. Yeah. Um, yeah, and involved in bad things and just yeah, just not doing anything productive. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the big turning point was um, our house got set on fire. No uh, way. We caught a light basically at, at one in the morning with in my mum's room when she was asleep, and that was the biggest. Yeah, because like, that was really close at this point. So I was 18, I you must have been 16. 16. Yeah. My youngest brother was the only person in the house at the moment, he was, at the time. No uh, way. He was 13. 13, so. No way. What he done was, um, obviously the fire alarm was going off, so like one in the morning, but he just stays up late anyway. Mm. Um, he, he just was like, oh, what? Like, he goes and opens my mum's room where the fire started. Black smoke. And like, you know when you see in films like a burning house, yeah, like yeah, yeah. there'd just be fire everywhere. It would, he said it was like a wall of black smoke. No right? way. So he my just... Mom, my mum was um, unconscious because of the... Fumes and Yeah, stuff. yeah. So she was just passed out on fire basically. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know how my little brother done it. I don't know how he could think like that from a, that age. Plus he's got like three or four seconds to do it. Yeah. What, what he done was he, he grabbed my mum he like had to drag her out of her room with her head on the floor because he knows smoke rises and then oh. dragged her to his room stuck her head out the window tried to get her to breathe for a bit before he, he, he had to walk her through the fire and you know what's crazy about that and you just said it there like when you're in a situation like that you literally have split seconds to make Definitely. decisions which are like yeah. literally like life and death but to put that responsibility on a kid that's like 13 years old yeah, yeah. and then to see your mom like that yeah, your first yeah. instinct would be to panic. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's just, just like, he's cool as a cucumber, this guy. Yeah, he's my little brother. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> I like, he, he phones me. <laughs> it was my missus's at the time's um, birthday. So it's one in the morning, I finally get to her house. So we were having a drink, so I'm drunk. And I get a phone call from my brother. There's a fire in the house. So I was like, put it out, mate. Put the phone down. And he phones me straight back. He's like, it's bigger than the house. I was like, what? No he, way. Yeah, and then, he, and then I was just like, talking about and then he's like yeah i think mum's gonna die and i was like instantly sobered up ran out of my house uh went to like this pub called yates and i was like yeah. i know someone in here and yeah. then um because i was local and then i was just like oh, no, where's, where's my mates where's my mates i need to get a lift uh, one of my mates was like look jump in the taxi you say that you're going to pay for the taxi with the money from your house and then when you get to the house there's going to be fire so he's not going to want to go in the house and get the money yeah so i just jumped a taxi to the place Obviously, just trying to be calm, you know, the guy's making, like, small talk with me. Um, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, thinking my mum's dead. I get there, start to try run in the house. Um, ambulance people, no, the <coughs> fire, fire brigade, like, don't go in there. I was like, my, my fucking mum's in there. Mm. Uh, they, they said, no, she's next door. I go in there, she's, like, completely, like, pitch black of, like, smoke. Yeah, Got yeah, no skin, skin on her. Completely off. Yeah, and they're spraying disinfectant on her, so she's screaming. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. And then uh, she... Goes into the ambulance and then I'm sorry, right, I'm coming with you, uh, Liam, come. And then they're like, you're only allowed one person in the ambulance. All right, so I'm going to have to jump another taxi to the hospital. But I say to the nurse, I said, look, I need, I'm the older brother, I've got dad, I need to know, right, is my mum going to die? She, goes, she was like sad and just goes, her lungs are closing. So, you know, gave me yes, that. Yeah. yeah, she was like, yeah. basically, yeah. Jeez. So I'm thinking this now and I'm like, I've got like hardly any money left. <clears throat> She's got a bit of money from saving and then, um, so my youngest brother had no clothes, no nothing. We like, and I couldn't phone social services because I didn't want the, us brothers to get separated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't want it, us to get sent to my dad. So I'm just like trying to find a place to live, try to make sure he gets food, um, clothe him, you know, send him to school, which you know I didn't really do. Um, and also like, when the whole thing was happening, see some of my mates and stuff and, and everyone knows about it and like mm. you never think it's going to happen to you something like yeah, that yeah. and it does and then but you, you've, you've also just got to crack on as well and a lot of people used to look at us weird like how are they dealing with it 
Mm. Like, did you have to? Did you feel like? Do you know, like we just still smile. We, you know, we could, did you feel like you had to do that to protect the people in your family, so that your mum didn't know it was affecting them, that your little brother didn't know it was affecting them, or, or yeah, not to show other other people as well, to say that like, look, obviously inside you must have been sort of like hurting, but you just put a front on just so that. Yeah, you know, definitely. Yeah. But I think it also goes back to. I felt if, if you can't change the, like a situation as well, there's why like obviously it's a sad situation. Yeah. But there's nothing that you can do to change that. So yeah. you just got to think, what can I do to better what, what we're in at the moment? And being upset, not doing anything, it's not going to do anything. But see, this is where yeah. like we will always disagree, man, because I think ninety percent of people will will look at that situation and they'll melt, they'll crumble, and they won't see it like you boys do, which is okay, this happened, this is my life. Okay, we need to get over it. So now, what, what do I do next? Mm -hmm. Instead, you get people stuck in this limbo where it's all they can think about, it's what takes them and drags them down. So what you're saying takes so much mental strength to, to yeah. say, this has happened, there's nothing we can do about it, let's move, more, let's move forward. And you don't learn that level of maturity, in my opinion, till your late 20s or 30s, and, and you're forgetting that you guys are just kids, man. Yeah, yeah. 18, 16, 30. We've always been doing like, tough. We've yeah, always had to be strong. find our own way all the time. Yeah, like, always been meant to be strong kids, so we just saw it, saw it as a, I never thought, I, I never thought my mum was going to die. I like, always had, like, nah, she's not. Um, I just saw it as a, a setback. We've seen my mum start from the start so many times in her life. Yeah. yeah. I just saw it as a setback, and we have to be strong for each other. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the only way. So, I don't know, it is what it is. So. Do you still feel like you deal with problems like that now? Because I feel like you may have applied some of that.